This is Copa Agostino 2021. We got Movistar in the front here looking pretty strong. There's a fair few solid riders here. Val Ballas here, Valverde, um, or Remy Rojas, who's decent, Ben Tullet. But the big ones are Lechenko and Trentin. So with 42 kilometers to go, they've just come over the top and Movistar have really reduced this bunch by quite a lot um, and really basically you know, made it made it a properly hard race. These are like the classic Italian spring races. I can bring you this footage because it's PMG who don't have a deal with Eurosport, which is why it's a little bit late. I should have done it at the time, but it is what it is. Um, I also don't have a camera because I broke my elbow and I can't really bother to set up a camera. It's a bit of an effort. Um, but you can see here, it's like a pretty hilly race this. Um, there's a lot of climbs, but the, the, the last like maybe 10, 15K is, is quite flat. So it really suits someone who can get over the climbs. You'd say out of anyone, it would be Sonny Cobrelli, and I'm pretty sure he won the year before this. But in this situation, it's it's harder to tell. You can see that also the, on the downhill, it is definitely a good opportunity to put people under pressure. You can see here the UAE rider, who I believe it's Trentin, is really pushing it on the downhill. Um, and there's another climb here with 36 kilometers to go. And again, Movistar on the front, just making sure it's a it's a firm tempo. Valverde really is the favorite for this, in my opinion. Um, obviously, he's getting older and older, so it's harder to say that he's a favorite in every race. But Ruben Fernandez for Cofidis goes on the attack. And... I guess it makes sense, you know, they don't have a big, big favorite and they're really trying to stretch Movistar into chasing them down. But I would say sometimes you think with 36k to go on your own, it's not really going to work. Anyway, you go to 27k to go, he got brought back, Remy Rojas is on the attack, um, Alperson have a fair few riders, um, Ben Tullet was further back and you can see Lichenko, um is sort of heart rate monitor open. This is, I believe, Bruno Fernandez, who's, sorry, not Bruno Fernandez, Ruben Fernandez. Bruno Fernandez is the all football for Manu. Uh, anyway, he's obviously cracked. And we're 27k to go there on the, some of the, there's, there's only two climbs after this. And you can see the pace is pretty hot when Lachenko's on the top. Um, and Baller is in like fourth wheel now um, with Trentin and Kovi um, for UAE. You can also see Ben Hermans, who uh, also won Trey Vela Veracina this year. And at this point, everyone's sort of across the road looking, um, looking across for trying to figure out. There's no real obvious person. I think. This is where maybe Movistar didn't do the best tactic. Obviously, they tried to make it hard, but now Valverde is really isolated and it's hard to control. So you can see Trentin's moving up now. Obviously, that sort of you would say the best sprinter in this situation if it came to the flat. Um, and Alperson are just setting tempo on the front, which I don't think is a bad idea. I just think sometimes you got to think what are you trying to what outcomes you want from the race. And sometimes people just seem to get on the front because they've got more numbers than everyone else. Like there's three Alperson guys, but. The question is how, like, how are you going to win this race? Like Ben Tullet, you, you need to get him away in a very small group, um, and he might be able to get the sprint. But you can see here we're coming up to the last climb. This is the last climb. Then it's basically downhill all the way to the finish. Um, so you know it, it's one of those ones where, again, like you know if you can get over the top, you need to make sure you have a group that works well together. And maybe having teammates isn't the best thing. There's a crash here when Ben Tullet's going on the attack further back. I believe Mark Christian um, fell down, but Ben Tullet, you know, has come top 10 in uh, Amstel Gold, I believe, and um, some solid results in the age as well. So pretty strong boy here. They're going back to the crash. Pretty unfortunate for Mark Christian. He looked like he'd made the selection. Remy Rochas, he's really good. He's done like 350 watts for 20 minutes and weighs about 52 kilos. So, you know, he's 6.6, 6.7 watts per kilo. So he's a strong boy, and I, I really thought he'd have a better year than he did. Um, he was in the breakaway um, early on with in the Volta um, a Catalunya. Uh, in the first stage, uh, when Andreas Kron won, he actually made that break, which was pretty good. Um, but, you know, he's not, he's, again, he's not one of those guys who can sprint. You can see Alessandro Corvi's in second wheel. He's got sort of a trump card behind him, which is Trentin, um, which you can see fr from behind is just trying to get back on. Lutschenko, again, he's with, like, sort of similar to Valverde. He's got a good sprint. Like, he's out-sprinted strong people before, as he used to be more of a cobbled guy. So he's still got his kick, but obviously just leaned up quite a lot. Um, which is why he's more of a GC boy. He came top 10 in the tour this year. And he, he, again, I think is quite relaxed in this situation. Like, he knows there's not going to be many people who can climb better than him. And apart from Valverde and Trentini, he's probably got one of the best sprints. So, again, this little ramp here, Remy Rochas is going up. We're going to go over the top now because they basically all just came back together. Trentin was backed off a little bit, but Trentin is a really good descender. I don't know if you can remember in the Vuelta um, when Magnus Court won his second stage. And on the descent just into the finish there, he absolutely railed it and made a big gap. People said it was maybe an error in hindsight because, you know, he wastes a lot of energy. But Trentin is really, really good at descending. And he managed to get back on this, which on this descent, you can see here, he's absolutely flying down. 
um, chasing the TV motorbikes. And I guess the thing is, if the people on the front aren't pushing it, which they weren't, then, you know, descending, getting back on the descent isn't too hard. You think absolute power as well. He's going to be doing a lot more watts than a lot of these guys. Anyway, he comes off the front. They sort of soft tap for a bit. And then he attacks straight away here, 12K to go. And um, he actually points out cars, which is pretty good halfway through an attack. And Ben Herman, oh, sorry, Alessandro De Marchi is there. Um, trying to chase on this is the group behind who are sort of a bit chaos like they're not really going to get back on they weren't going to play and he attacks here Hermans gives up Remy Rochas is not going to close that gap and Valverde again is looking around and I think this is where Valverde needs to like do something better than just chasing back I think this is where his teammates again he had a good strong team but they didn't couldn't do anything anyway Lushenko decides it's time to go he solos across this gap and no one can come with him and I think this is where it's like false flat downhill sort of thing it's, it's hard to bridge across um, just because the speed difference is really hard to get. Like, isn't they're going to be riding 53.11 and it's just like, how fast can you spin your legs almost? But Lechenko gets across and this was basically the break. I mean, like after this, you're just not getting back because there's two people who both have a good reason to ride. And I think in hindsight, Trentin could have played this slightly differently. But I think at this moment in time, it's probably a perfect solution because he's got a teammate behind in Corvi and then... Lutschenko has like no reason not to pull because he doesn't have a great sprint, most people think, so that he wouldn't necessarily think he could out-sprint everyone from the group behind. So he's going to be pulling and Trentin's probably like, well, if I pull, Kovi's not got that great a sprint either. But I think there were some miscalculations by certain people and this group behind really just stops working altogether. Um, there's no real like... There's no real strong team and there's also no one who you're like guaranteed there was win. For instance, if you were... Um, Albus and Fenix and they had someone like Merlier then you'd work a lot harder to try and close the gap but there just wasn't really anyone so that was basically it like this was the selection the TV camera didn't really show how Lutschenko got across that well which is why you know it just sort of seemed like he came from nowhere um, but we're going to the last kilometer and I think Trentin now I think I don't know why he's on the front he doesn't need to be on the front because realistically he should have a better sprint than uh Lutschenko and he's also got a teammate behind I think he should have lent on him a lot more and you can see here he's not soft tapping that much because the group's behind but then he just gets absolutely jumped by Lutschenko from like a decent way out and just gets absolutely battered by Lutschenko which I thought was really rogue it was like 200 meters when he went and Trentin just had nothing which is sort of strange because you'd think in reality you should have a way better sprint and I think it goes to show that he just did a bit too much work and didn't really think about it that Lutschenko like is a strong boy but he wouldn't back himself in the sprint behind if you look at this now guess who comes th um third Kovi so it doesn't make any sense like, how UA messed this up. They should have, Kovi should have said, I feel really good, Trentin, don't do any work um, because I think I can probably win the sprint anyway. And then they would have had two two chances of winning it with a lead out like that. If Trentin had let out Kovi, he definitely would have won. Like, So I think in hindsight, it was actually a really bad mistake by UAE letting Trentin do so much work and not necessarily la relying on Lutschenko more. But anyway, those are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think about this race. I think it's really interesting some of the tactics. And I think... Um, in conclusion, Movistar also messed it up by just not, um, by just pacing too hard too early and leaving Valverde exposed.